Good evening and welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chahan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. Starting with the important update from the Supreme Court which today pronounced judgment in the batch of petitions seeking independent probe into the Adani Hindenburg issue. You already know that last year in January, US-based short-selling firm Hindenburg Research had published a scathing report accusing the Adani group of widespread manipulations and malpractices aimed at inflating its stock prices. The Adani group had vehemently refuted the allegations. Subsequently, a group of PILs were filed in the Supreme Court seeking a court-monitored probe into the matter. A bench comprising CGI Chandrachud, Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra had reserved the judgment in the matter on 24th November. Today, while delivering the verdict, the court has refused to order a probe by a special investigation team into the allegations levelled in the Hindenburg Research Report. The court expressed confidence in the ongoing investigation by Securities and Exchange Board of India, that is SEBI, and found no valid reasons to instruct SEBI to revoke its amendments on FPI and LODR regulations. The court dismissed the petitioner's concerns about a conflict of interest within the members of the expert committee constituted by the court to examine the issue. However, it advised the Government of India and SEBI to consider this committee's recommendations for enhancing the regulatory framework to safeguard the interest of Indian investors. The court also cautioned against lawyers filing public interest litigations without thorough research and relying on unverified reports. To read the detailed judgment, you can visit livelaw.in. The Supreme Court has issued guidelines to high courts to tackle the issue of courts summoning government officials too often and without clear reasons. A bench comprising CGI Chandrachur, Justice J.B. Pardewala and Justice Manoj Mishra framed a standing operating procedure on summoning of government officials and directed that all high courts should follow it. The court passed these directions while setting aside the direction issued by Allahabad High Court to take into custody two secretaries of the Uttar Pradesh government for alleged non-compliance of directions regarding facilities to retired judges. During the course of the hearing, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta had requested the CGI to lay down guidelines on summoning government officials and had also submitted a draft SOP. According to the guidelines, the Supreme Court in Derelia has advised high courts to refrain from making oral remarks humiliating the officers and comments on their social background, physical appearances, dress, etc. And that personal presence should be directed only in exceptional cases and reason should be recorded as to why such presence is required. You can visit livelaw.in to read the guidelines in detail. You must be aware that operators of trucks, taxis and buses went on a nationwide strike and have been protesting against some provisions of the newly passed criminal law bills which are set to replace the IPC, CRPC and the Evidence Act. They have specifically objected to the hit and run provision under Section 106 Clause 2 of Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita. As per this provision, any driver who causes the death of a person by rash and negligent driving and flees from the spot will be jailed for up to 10 years plus fine. But if the driver informs the officials about the incident, he will attract a lesser punishment. The intention is to prevent the drivers fleeing from the place of the incident. Protesting against the same, operators of trucks, taxis and buses went on a nationwide strike asking the central government to withdraw the provision. They claimed that this provision could lead to their undue harassment. Drivers apprehend that staying in the place of the accident might subject them to mob violence. Presently, as per Section 304A of IPC, which describes causing death by negligence, drivers in rash and negligent cases face penalties up to two years in jail. After holding detailed discussions with the operators, the Government of India has issued a press release stating that hit-and-run provision of Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita will be invoked only after consultations with the All India Motor Transport Congress. 
The government has appealed to all the drivers to return to their jobs. For your information, I must tell you that the three new criminal law bills which were passed by the parliament and received the president's assent have not been notified so far. Only when a law is notified by the government does it come into effect. Without proper notification, the provisions of a law are not considered operational. The Supreme Court today issued notice to the union government and 13 state governments on a PIL which highlighted the issue of caste-based segregation in prisons in various states. The petition has been filed by Sukanya Shanta, a journalist who had authored the award-winning report titled From Segregation to Labour, Manu's Caste Law Governs the Indian Prison System. The report was published by The Wire in 2020 and it forms the subject matter of the present petition. The petition highlights identical discriminatory laws within the state prison manual of 13 major states including Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Uttar Pradesh, etc. The petitioner highlights that while these colonial spirited laws have been amended to some extent by the states, discriminatory practices continue to take place within the prisons. The bench comprising CJI Chandrachur, Justice J.B. Pardewala and Justice Manoj Mishra was appraised of the state of affairs in several prisons across the nation where prison manuals reinforce caste-based discrimination through caste hierarchy in the division of labour and segregation of barracks. The bench, while issuing notice in the matter, asked the petitioner to furnish a tabulated chart indicating the discriminatory state-wise provisions and requested the Solicitor General to assist the court. The matter will be listed for hearing after four weeks. Stay tuned. And now an update on the writ petition filed by Trinamool Congress leader Mawa Moitra challenging her recent expulsion from the Lok Sabha. As you are aware, she was expelled on 8th December following adoption of an ethics committee report accusing her of unethical conduct over cash for query allegations. The Supreme Court today asked the Secretary General of Lok Sabha to file a reply to the writ petition. While issuing notice, a division bench of Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta observed that one of the issues would be the jurisdiction of the court to review Lok Sabha's action. The reply is to be filed within three weeks. The Solicitor General appearing for the Lok Sabha Secretary General submitted that the court cannot interfere with the internal functioning of the legislature as it would be a violation of doctrine of separation of powers. Senior Advocate Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi appearing for Mawa Moitra contended that the Supreme Court could interfere with patently malified actions of the Lok Sabha. He alleged violations of the principles of natural justice since Darshan Hiranandani, who filed an affidavit before the Ethics Committee making allegations against Moitra, was not allowed to be cross-examined. Singhvi argued that expulsion of opposition MPs on such flimsy grounds was a matter of grave constitutional importance. The Supreme Court has today stayed an order passed by the Himachal Pradesh High Court which removed Sanjay Kundu from the post of Himachal Pradesh's Director General of Police. The bench was hearing an SLP filed by the officer against an order passed by the High Court in a suo-moto proceeding initiated on a complaint made by a resident of the Kangra district. To tell you about the matter in brief, the complainant alleged a threat to his life by a former IPS officer and a practicing lawyer. The complainant belongs to a business family which runs a hotel in Palampur in Himachal Pradesh. He contended that a relative of one of the mentioned persons had invested in his company in various small-scale projects. As the lawyer was now in financial difficulties, this had led him to use undue influence by way of force and intimidation through the former IPS officer for extorting money from the complainant and his father. He has alleged that the DGP was also helping the said persons, that he had received calls on 15 occasions from the DGP after which an FIR was registered by the DGP against him. On 26th December, the High Court had directed DGP Kundu to be moved to another post. After this, he moved the Supreme Court. Senior Advocate Mukul Rohtaki, appearing for Kundu, argued that the High Court issued the order without hearing him, that he has a flawless service record 
and the High Court's decision unfairly harms him who is about to retire. The Apex Court today stayed the order and granted liberty to Kundu to approach the High Court seeking recall of the order. The stay order will be in effect till the recall application is disposed. The court also stayed the consequent order issued by the state government transferring him as the DGP and posting him as the Principal Secretary of the Ayush Department. A Lucknow court has decreed a defamation suit in favour of ex-UP Minister and BJP leader Dr. Mahindra Singh and against Aam Admi Party Rajya Sabha MP Sanjay Singh. In August 2021, Sanjay Singh had addressed a press conference in Lucknow wherein he alleged that Jal Shakti Ministry of the State awarded contracts worth thousands of crores to a company with a tainted reputation. He had also called the then Jal Shakti Minister Mahindra Singh a Pani Chor. The BJP leader then filed a suit against the same. In April 2022, the matter had proceeded ex parte against Sanjay Singh since he did not appear before the court pursuant to the summons served on him. From a perusal of record including the copies of statements published by Singh on his social media account as well as the statements made by him in the press conference, the court observed that he had made defamatory statements against Mahindra Singh. The court has also directed Sanjay Singh to delete video footage and social media posts about the said press conference and has directed him to pay 1 lakh rupees as compensation to Mahindra Singh. In another update, the Delhi High Court has directed the Municipal Corporation of Delhi and Delhi Fire Services to constitute a joint task force to examine and inspect all coaching and teaching centres situated in city's Mukherjee Nagar area. The bench was dealing with a bunch of pleas concerning proliferation of coaching institutes and commercial activities in Mukherjee Nagar and their failure to comply with fire and public safety norms. The batch of petitions also includes a suo moto case initiated by the court in June last year after fire broke out at a coaching institute in Mukherjee Nagar. A division bench of Justice Yashwant Verma and Justice Ravindra Dudeja ordered that the Joint Task Force will draw up a comprehensive report indicating violations and other non-conforming aspects that may come to its notice. It also granted liberty to the Joint Task Force to pass preemptory orders including those of closure in respect of coaching centres found to be openly hazardous and unfit to function. The court also refused to modify an order passed by the coordinate bench last year which had directed the Delhi government and MCD to close down those coaching centres which are operating without a no objection certificate from the fire department. And lastly, the District Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission Chandigarh has held Yatra Online Private Limited liable for deficiency in service and unfair trade practices for failing to inform a complainant about the requirement of transit visa for the connecting flight and for failure to provide a direct layover free flight. In this case, the complainant booked an air ticket for his son through the website of Yatra Online Private Limited from Delhi to Toronto. However, Yatra erroneously booked the air ticket for the route Delhi to Madrid, Madrid to Lisbon and Lisbon to Toronto. The complainant informed Yatra about the need to cancel the air ticket due to his son's requirement for a transit visa. Despite his concerns, Yatra assured him that there would be no issue. On the scheduled date of travel, the son was denied entry at Delhi airport, leading the complainant to purchase a new air ticket for a direct flight to Toronto at a cost of 88,000 rupees. The complainant sought a refund from Yatra, but he received no satisfactory reply. Feeling aggrieved, he filed a consumer complaint. Yatra asserted that the tickets were booked online over a call for Toronto via Madrid. The details were shared with the complainant through an email and the tickets were confirmed upon receipt of a go-ahead email from the complainant. Yatra contended that the complainant inquired about the transit visa over the call and it had explained to him that it was necessary to have a transit visa of the local embassy or airlines. The district commission noted that Yatra failed to deliver professional services and guidance expected when the complainant approached it for availing services. 
The district commission held that as a professional agency, Yatra had the responsibility to provide a hassle-free and direct route from Delhi to Toronto. The commission thus directed Yatra online to pay 56,000 rupees to the complainant. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future content. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.